thank you guys for joining us today. Um, our topic is self-publishing 101. Why, how, and where to self-publish your work. I am Erin Creighton. I am the adult services department head for the Porter branch. And Joy, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yes, and I am Joy O'Toole. I am the adult services programmer at the Howl branch. Yes, excellent. So, so we started today by just doing um, a quick little poll. And, you know, the results of the poll was that most people have not actually explored self-publishing before. Maybe some have. And um, it doesn't look like anybody who's here today has actually dived into it. So thank you all for coming. And I hope that at the end of the presentation, you have a better feel for where to start this process. And if you have any questions, like I said throughout, please feel free to drop a comment into um, uh, the chat box and Joy and I will be happy to answer those for you. All right, so self-publishing statistics. So what's interesting about these is we pulled some going from um, fairly far back, 2002, the early ages of eBooks, <laughs> um, all the way up through um, May 2020. So in 2002, Boker, um, Boker um, the U.S. issuer of ISBN numbers, issued about 250, a little bit less than 250,000 ISBNs. By 2012, the demand rose to over 2.3 million which is a huge whopping increase of 249.5%. So people like to talk about, you know, the dying publishing industry and all that stuff. It's nonsense. People really like to read. People are publishing books and people are buying their books. Um, you'll notice for the next one, it says between 2014 and 2015, ISBN, ISBN numbers grew another 21%. Now, how does that look for self-published books? For 2018, self-published books grew over 40% uh, between 2017 and 2018. So more and more people are going the self-publishing route. Um, you know, we talk about the big five publishers. I think, you know, I don't know if we do that in this presentation because that's more of a traditional route of publishing. It's, it's harder to get in with those. And honestly, now they're the big four because Penguin is buying out another one of them. So uh, ebook sales might be the way to go. Self-published ebook sales, rather. And this is a statistic I actually found today um, on Jane Friedman's website. And you'll hear more about her later. U.S. traditional publishers reported at 4.3% growth in ebook sales through May 2020. Now, obviously, that isn't for the whole pandemic. But 4.3% for just the few first few months of 2020 is a huge growth rate. And in 2018, ebooks accounted for 8% of all self published titles. Memoir is the biggest, science fiction is next. The other largest growing fields are um, young adult titles and juvenile titles. Mm -hmm. So, if any of those are things that you like to write, all right. All right, so there are reasons why you might want to consider self-publishing, um, and these are from self-publishing school, which I will talk about a little bit more later when we start talking about podcasts. Um, but they have some idea or some reasons why you might want to consider it for your own publishing. First, you don't have to wait for permission. So with a self-published book, you don't have to wait for somebody else, an agent or a publisher, to say, "Hey, you know, let me get your book out there for you." you can make that decision for yourself. You don't need somebody else to, to make that decision for you. Uh, for instance, Tim Ferriss, who wrote The 4-Hour Workweek, um, it's a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller. Um, he was rejected by 26 publishers before he was able to uh, self-publish it. So, you know, just but and it's hugely popular. Uh, so don't necessarily wait for somebody to give you permission. Um, because you don't have to, not with self-publishing. The second reason is you can publish your work more quickly. If you take it to a traditional publisher, it's going to take years. First, you have to find the agent. Then you have to actually write the book and get it to editing. And then they have to find the right time in their cycle for it. And it has to go to the printer. It can take years before it's published. Whereas if you do it in the self-publishing, it may, it may not take um, very long at all, especially if you decide to do it something like uh, Kindle Direct. Uh, it can be very, very quick when you have the ebook show up. 
You can change the way you're paid. Traditionally, published authors are typically paid an amount of money up front. However, once the sales come rolling in, they only get a small cut. It doesn't work that way with self-publishing. You take in most of the earnings. Um, one of the people in the audience actually has self-published, and she might be able to tell us a little bit more about that later in the Q&A. Um, so, for instance, on Amazon, self-published authors receive 70% of the royalties for an ebook price between $2.99 and $9.99. And that is hugely superior to what you're going to get through traditional publishing. You form invaluable connections. Self-publishers have a tendency to really build um, networks together. Uh, indie, indie publishing is becoming such a big deal that their, their networks are starting to form and, and they're beginning to have um, much bigger um, bargaining power. Uh, because of the fact that there, it's such a growing thing right now to self-publish. You control your objective. So, so much of a book is influenced by the motive that fuels it. What is your motive? That's always something to ask. You get to decide. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean to make money or to launch a new career or to, sh to uh, share your story. Um, there are all kinds of reasons why you might be deciding and you get to decide that no publisher gets to decide that for you. You get to control your creative concept. That's a huge thing because of course with, with traditional publishing, once the publisher gets involved, so a lot of things get taken out of your control. Um, I remember a, a local author saying that the, the cover that he wanted was not the one he ended up with because the publisher said, no, you can't have that cover. And I've heard, you know, where publishers have wanted you to uh, make huge changes that you don't want to make, um, totally change things around that you don't want to change. Um, and when you self-publish, that is not true. You get to decide those things, not the publisher. And finally, you get to control your future. So most people looking to write a book want to earn more money, gain more freedom, and have a platform to share their ideas. You will have complete ownership over your ideas and over your future with self-publishing. Whereas with traditional publishing, there are benefits, of course, but you don't have the same kind of control. So if that kind of control is important to you, then self-publishing may be the way for you to go. Excellent. Okay, so some of the obstacles to self pu self publishing. Excuse me, finding an affordable publishing house. You know, I think I mentioned this a little earlier. Is that publishing houses can change um, more more or less depending on how big they are, their status in the self publishing industry, and what they include as part of their contract. You know, cover, editing, proofreading, ebook versus print, hardcover versus soft, etc. And honestly. Um, you know, like I said earlier, Sim, uh, Penguin House, Penguin Random House is trying to buy Simon & Schuster, putting together the first and the third largest publishing houses. So, you know, that that window of opportunity for all these traditional houses is getting smaller as the big five become the big four. Uh, marketing difficulties. You know, marketing with a publisher requires a lot more from an author than it used to 20 years ago. Uh, marketing without a publisher, it's all on the author and you need to learn all that you can as well as to build yourself a platform. So, you know, when you're marketing with one of these um, big publishing houses, yeah, they'll, they'll come with a marketing team, but honestly, you know, you're going to be one in a huge, you're going to be a small fish in a huge pond of people getting published through that marketing house, uh, through that uh, publishing house. And you're going to end up doing a lot of the work yourself with less of the control. Uh, accessibility for buyers. Potentials, can potential buyers find your book? Um, can they buy your book? Are the books in a variety of places or just one place? How easily can your readers find your book? You know, certain publishers have deals with certain places and the books can't always go everywhere. And you want to make sure that when you publish your book, it can go basically as where, wherever you would like it to go. Um, you find less support along the way. Um, you will not have an agent, an editor, a publisher to help you navigate this process. So you will have to do all the research upfront um, to do it successfully on your own, which we hope we're helping with here today. And um, finding professionals, you know, to help you with your book covers, editing, finances, author website and all that stuff. Um, networking is key. Don't rely just on family and friends unless they are professionals. Um, none of this is meant to dissuade you from self-publishing. As we discussed, there are lots of good reasons to do it. 
Just don't do it. Just don't go into it with your eyes closed to the possible difficulties and obstacles. We want you to be your successful and we want you to do your homework. And that's part of what this um, class is hopefully here to help with. All right, so somebody had just asked about um, publishing services that say you own the book, but we're going to help you publish. Um, here are some questions for any publishing service that you encounter that you are looking into. These are questions that um, these are tips from Jane Friedman. If you have not found Jane Friedman yet, I highly re recommend you do. It's going to be on the handout that you can ask us for at the end. Um, and the reason why I say that is she has been in the publishing industry for decades, and she does talks a lot about self-publishing. She talks a lot about traditional publishing and all the ins and outs of all of it. And these are her tips, and they're really good things to keep in mind as you look into different publishing services. Um, first, you wanna ask, is this an exclusive or non-exclusive service? So in other words, can you sell your book only on their platform or, you, or can you sell it on other platforms as well? Um, if it's exclusive, what, is, what are the terms of the contract? So in other words, if, it's, um, if you can only sell it on their platform, then that gives you an idea that um, you know, you're only going to have one place. Whereas if you can sell it in multiple places, then that's going to give you a little bit more freedom. It's something to consider. If, uh, if it's exclusive, then, um, and it's only on the one, that one platform, you know, what are their terms? You want to look very carefully at whatever contract you sign before you sign it. Um, you don't necessarily need an attorney, but you do definitely want to, to read through these contracts very, very carefully before you sign anything. The next question you want to ask them is who controls the price? Do you control the price or does the publishing house? For instance, I know that Amazon sometimes will make a decision to change the price on a book on their platform, even if that's not something that you decided to do. Um, those are questions you want to ask up front. Um, and that may be fine with you. You may say, oh, well, this is a great way for me to get more people buying my book and increase my market share. And that is fine. And there are a lot of people who really want to do it that way. However, you want to make sure that you're the one that is comfortable with that and has made that decision. Again, self-publishing is about you being more in control of things. And so you want to be careful when you sign that originally with that contract with the publishing service that you're comfortable with all the terms. The next question is, is there an upfront fee? What is it? And how is royalty calculated? Um, always read the fine print. Some publishers are going to charge less upfront and take more in royalties, while others are going to charge a larger amount upfront and give you more of the royalties, which means that maybe it costs you more to start, but if your book becomes really popular, then you'll make more money than if it's the other way around. Definitely something to look into. Um, are there hidden fees or charges? Remember to read that fine print. The fine print is going to help you to see uh, what all their charges are. And there may be additional charges that you're not aware of unless you read those fine prints. So make sure that you're doing that. Uh, what file formats do they accept? This is really important. Some will only accept certain file formats. Most places take Microsoft Word. Many places you have to upload your files directly, like Smashwords, um, and you have to have removed all of the Word formatting. Um, other places you need to convert your file to a certain thing. Unless you have a writing program such as Scrivener that allows for multiple outputs, you want to make sure that you know how to format your document so that it can be uploaded to whichever publisher you're using. The next question that you want to ask them is who owns the ebook files after they're created? This is absolutely key. Uh, some services that do conversions for you allow you access, but not ownership of those converted files. So if you're getting somebody else to convert your files for you, you may lose your ownership. You don't want to lose your ownership. And so that is something you really want to look into very, very carefully is whether or not you're losing your ownership on something. Are there digital rights protection that's called DRM um, or proprietary formats involved? OK, those are important in that they're going to protect your work from privacy, but they're also going to limit access to your work. 
And so you want to consider that. That's something that libraries run into all the time. We're only allowed to use um, a certain uh, ebook a certain number of times before we have to rebuy it because of some of these formats. Um, that makes it cost prohibitive at times for us. Um, that's going to be true in the public as well. So it's something you want to consider whether or not you want more open access and take the chance of piracy, or if you want it to be a tighter control um, and protect your work, um, but also means that it won't be quite as widely distributed. And finally, another, the last question you want to ask um, is, can you make changes to your ebook after it goes on sale? So unlike print books, ebooks can be amended when necessary. Is the publisher going to allow for those kind of amendments? Uh, for instance, I don't know if any of you read Kindle books, but I occasionally will get a notification from Amazon saying that one of the Kindle books that um, I have um, on my Kindle is ready for an update because the author has gone back and actually made changes to it. They're usually corrections to things that were wronged in the beginning. Um, but, you know, that's something that you want to consider is if you want to be able to have the option to make amendments, is that something that is going to be allowed? <clears throat> okay. So places to publish your work. And this is not meant to be a definitive list by any means. Um, there are a lot more places to publish your work, but these are the ones that we picked out just to talk about because see, these are some of the big ones that you'll see a lot for self-publishing. So um, Ingram Spark is the first one that we have on the list. And the reason that we like Ingram Spark at the library <laughs> is because then if you publish your ebook through Ingram Spark, the library can then actually purchase the book and we can help um, you promote your book by lending out your book to our customers to borrow. Um, it's a huge advantage when you're trying to grow your audience. So Ingram Spark definitely has some highlights to it. It also has some really great resources for self-publishing, including marketing tips, best blogs to follow, and a free self-publishing class series. So all that stuff is on the Ingram Spark website. Um, at the end of the presentation, if you'd like a copy of these of the presentation, we will give you that, and all of these are live links. Um, Watt, Wattpad is a free online publishing platform with over 70 million writers and readers. So Wattpad has authors of every possible genre have been going there to discover, cultivate, and build a community of their own unique readers by instantly publishing works on a social media site. So Wattpad is an interesting mix of publishing and social media. It sort of combines the two. Fan story, it's all about feedback for this. Um, I don't know if anybody you have checked that out yet. It really, um, it's really all about getting constructive criticism on your work. So if you read some of the testimonials on their homepage, you'll see what I mean. Um, other people on fan story actually review your work, offer that constructive criticism, and help you improve your work to get it ready to be published. They also offer contests throughout the year with an opportunity to win prizes for your writing. So if you're really at the stage where you know your work is good, but you could also use some constructive criticism, fan story is definitely a place to check out while still getting some exposure. Um, the Virginia Author Project is an annual contest for indie published books and winners receive book promotions and a cash prize. It's part of the National Indie Author Project. This is just our local state chapter of it. And um, it usually publishes, I believe every fall, they announce the winner. Mm -hmm. um, Lulu is an option that you can go to uh, where they actually will help you. Um, I'm sorry, Lulu is 100% free, but they also have some add-ons that you can pay for. You can pay to have um, design assistance done on your book and some other features, uh, but you can also choose to do the whole thing for free. Amazon Create Space, um, they have the option to, again, pay for design, uh, but the entire process can be free if you choose to do so. Uh, Amazon, you know, it has a lot of advantages that come with it. They are a huge name right now excuse me, in publishing and in book buying. A lot of people have Kindles and it's an easy way to get your uh, material out there. You're also, you know, again, it's, you have to think about marketing your material as well. Um, Pressbook is really an interesting thing that I had never heard of before I started researching for this class. You can create, edit, and format and generate print ready and an ebook formats for your books. Um, and it instantly, um, publishes it to the indie author po project. They also offer multimedia um, on this website. So you can have your original music, a short movie, or oral histories um, included for your community. And they all have this um, really cool stuff on their website. 
so authors can submit books to the indie author project and share their books without with uh, with readers throughout the um throughout and if your book is selected by library journal you can actually get it to be available for across the u.s and canada so it's you know we'll give you the opportunity to get your book more widely seen you can find out more about this by obviously going to their website press um press books and um we just want to point out that authors submitting to the Indie Author Project will give the Indie Author Project a non-exclusive license to make their ebook readily available to public library patrons. So it's one of those things when Joy was talking about earlier about you know questions that you want to ask. You know you get some really great exposure through press books, uh, through press books, but you are giving up uh, a non-exclusive license. Um, you know they also um, another positive for this website is though is that they also have an app that you can enjoy. Um, to your digital ebooks, images, and videos for libraries, artists, and authors. And um, they offer a variety of um, contests throughout the year as well. There are no holds, no overdues, and no logins. So there does try to take away a lot of those barriers for people accessing your books, but at the same time, like we said, it does give away that, um, that licensing agreement. So um, Self-E is the next one we'll talk about. And there, um, uh, they have the option for submitting your work to Selfie. It's a database that provides a home for self-published work to um, to their customers. It's all created through Library Journal and through BiblioBoard, and it chooses the best self-published work submitted and makes them nationally available through um, various genre modules. Uh, work not selected for the modules can still be made available within the author's state. Um, and it goes, th that will again feed through the Indie Author Project. So it's part of the same thing, but it's a little bit separate. And then Smashwords is the last one we'll talk about. Um, submission is free, but there are upcharges for formatting, covers, and all that stuff. So again, not intended to be a huge full list of everything that's out there, but it'll give you a good basics of where to go and get started if you're looking. So... All right, so you need to ready your book for publication. Uh, this is going to be key because especially um, with, with editing and everything else, you don't want something to be, you know, for a first draft that you're going to just put out there. Um, this is something that is absolutely essential if you want a professional book that's going to make a splash and perhaps spread out um, and get to a wider audience is is getting it ready really really well so the first thing you want to do is you want to edit your book thoroughly so you're going to start with self-editing and then you're going to move into maybe finding some what are called beta readers um, those are people who are going to read it they're going to read it um, often they'll read it for what you ask for so you may ask for them to read it for um, continuity of story or how does the story hold together um, does it make sense is there consistency um, is it, does it grip? Does it lag anywhere? So those are big picture things. You might want to ask some of them to look at smaller things like um, line editing or copy editing or proofreading. Um, so beta readers can be what you want them to be. Um, you can often find them in writers groups. You can find them online. Um, there are a lot of ways that, that you can um, Find beta readers. They are, somebody was just asking, they are usually not paid. No, beta readers are generally not paid. They are um, people oftentimes will trade um, where you've got people who are part of writing, reading a similar sort of thing um, or somebody you know who is into books. For instance, I have a friend who asked me to beta read a book that she had written, a historical fiction book, because of my librarian. She knew that I would be able to give her valuable feedback as far as how the book flew, uh, flows and everything out like that. So beta, beta readers are generally not paid. Um, so there are four types of editing. You might want to consider having professional editing done um, just to make sure that it's completely polished. And the four types of editing are develop, developmental editing, which is the over all structure and content of the book. The next is more structural editing, which is um, with, with developmental, they're going to tell you how to improve it, but they're not going to actually do the improving for you. Whereas a structural editor will not only tell you, oh, this is what needs to change, they'll actually help make the changes with you. Um, the next level is copy editing. That's correcting grammar, spelling, usage, things like that. And the final one is proofreading, which is basically just spelling and typos and punctuation, things like that. These are all levels of editing that you need to be doing or getting somebody else to do for you. 
Um, all of those kinds are important. I do recommend that you do the overall developmental edi editing first. There's no point in proofreading a section of a chapter that you're going to end up cutting because it doesn't flow with the rest of the book. Um, so usually you want to do the big picture editing first and then move down the move down. The next thing you want to do is format your book for easy uploading. That means you want to make sure that your fonts, your margins, it's justified correctly, the line spacing is correctly. You want to make sure there are only single spaces after punctuation. Um, it used to be back in the old days of typewriters that you had double spaces after punctuation. Now it's only single spaces. Um, I, you can just do a, um, a replace a, um, a find replace for that and get rid of all of those double spaces. That's really important that you do that. You want to make sure it's converted to the appropriate format. That's going to depend on the publishing platform as to what format it needs to be. But you need to make sure to do that um, and make sure it's in the correct format for the printer or publisher. You're going to choose the cover art and design cover. So artwork and design may be included in your package, or you may have to purchase that or design them separately. Um, you may need to find a freelance artist to help with your cover art or help with design. Um, in that case, make sure you're getting references and a clear fee up front before you do anything. That's really, really important. You want to decide on front and back matter um, if it's a nonfiction book. So are you going to have a preface? Are you going to have a forward? How about a table of contents, dedication, acknowledgments, glossary, index? Um, are you going to have illustrations and photographs? Where are they going to go? Oftentimes when you're doing something, your manuscript, you're going to have a placeholder for things like illustrations and photographs um, and have them separate so that the printer can put them in themselves. Um, these are things that you need to look into and how that works. Um, and finally, if you need an illustrator, you need to find one. And again, make sure you're getting references, make sure that you've got a clear fee structure up front, and also find out who owns the artwork. Um, because if for some reason that illustrator can't follow through with it, you need to know whether or not you're going to have access to the illustrations they've had so far. For instance, um, a local author who did a series of children's books, um, his illustrator wasn't able to continue with him, I think, after the second book, um, and he had to find somebody else. But he owned the illustrations um, for the first two books, which worked for him, but he couldn't continue them, and so he had to change illustrations partway through the series, which didn't work very well for him. So that's something you want to consider as well. So now we're going to talk about resources. And Joy's going to kick us off with the library resources. And we have a lot of really great resources here at the library. Right. So the first place that you really um, want to go, uh, you'll see um, a screenshot of this here on the presentation. It's an older one. Um, but it's our, our library website actually has a page specifically for writers. It's librarypoint.org backslash writers. And um, everything that we have is going to be on that page. So our writers groups are on that page. Um, if we have any special events like the self-publishing workshop, that's going to be on that page. Um, anything for local authors. So whenever we have a local author reception, our information on donating um, local author books, our information on lobby signings, um, our writers groups, everything is on that page. So it's a really great page for you um, to go to that's kind of a central place to look for the resources that we have that we're there, we're there to help um, with, with publishing your book and with writing your book too. Um, the second thing is, is our writers groups, our Inklings writers groups. So we have several of those. Um, somebody was just asking where you find beta readers. Sometimes that's where you're going to find beta readers as a, as a writers group like that. Um, somebody takes interest in what you're writing um, and you can approach them and say, hey, you know, I've got this manuscript and I really need, or I've got a chapter I'm really having a hard time with. Is that something you would have time to work on? And some people are really into that and would be really interested in doing that. Um, so the Inklings Writers Groups, we have a couple different kinds. We have our main groups. Um, those are groups where we cover a topic every month. Um, they meet in uh, two or three locations. Right now, everything is virtual. Um, 
writers of all genres come to the main groups. So you can write poetry, nonfiction, fiction, whatever you write, you can come to that. We also have critique groups that are broken down by genre. At the moment, um, virtually, the only ones we have meeting are the fiction and the journaling memoir group. Um, we're hoping to add the poetry book group back in and maybe have a, non, a general nonfiction group eventually. Um, we're not quite there yet, but if there's interest, we're hoping to add those. Um, those groups are really great because when you're writing, a lot of times you're writing, you're alone and you wonder, you know, is this any good? How do I know if it's any good? And just getting somebody else's feedback on it who can give you some encouragement. Hey, you got the great bones for something. Here are a few things you could like maybe tweak, but I really think you're going in the right direction. Or, you know, maybe this is a little bit uh, rough, but maybe if you did X, Y, Z, that might help. I mean, just having that kind of feedback, just knowing you're not alone in the process is a huge help. I know most of the writers in the groups really feel that way. Um, and they come out um, really inspired to keep writing because they know that there are people who are going to be their cheerleaders and also say, hey, what have you been writing lately? And it kind of keeps them writing, keeps them honest. I know they keep me honest. Um, so all the information on that will be um, in the handout and also on that writing page that I mentioned. Um, we also have an annual writers conference every year it just happened it's the first saturday of november and that's a great place to network and also learn craft and learn more about publishing there books we have lots and lots of books on writing on publishing uh, we have the publishing books um, literary marketplace books and the writers um, marketplace books that you can look up agents and you can look up illustrators and you can look up all kinds of things that are really, really useful for whatever you want to do, as well as books on craft. Um, so lots and lots of books on our website. Um, just you just go to librarypoint.org and put in writing craft. You're probably going to turn up a lot of things. That writer's page that I mentioned at the bottom, if you scroll to the bottom, there are a bunch of book lists of writing books also that we have there for you. Uh, we have writing magazines. If, you're, if you've always been interested in trying them out, we have the digital magazines of all the top ones, uh, Writer's Digest, The Writer, Poets and Writers, and Creative Nonfiction. So those are going to give you up-to-date information on what's going on in the writing world. Um, we have training videos. So lynda.com is one of the set of training videos we have. Um, with your library card, you can access any of those training courses for free. Um, some of the classes include writing in plain English, writing fundamentals, and editing, editing and proofreading. Um, Universal Class is another active learning platform you can access with your library card. Um, they're including novel writing, nonfiction writing, genre specific classes, magazine writing, all kinds of writing. They're really, really great. And then Canopy, which is streaming video, has the great courses, including writing great fiction, um, becoming a great essayist, and how to publish your book. That is actually um, 24 lessons taught by Jane Friedman, the one I mentioned earlier. Um, if you go to, if you buy one of her, her uh, courses like that, it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars, but you can get it for free through the Canopy streaming video at the library. Okay, so other resources. Um, so, you know, one of the big ones is we just came through uh, NaNoWriMo and, you know, I hope everybody had a very successful NaNoWriMo month. Um, it's free to sign up for an account and to get access to writing help, uh, pep talks, writing groups and more. You can set goals and stay accountable for the work that you actually want to get published. You know, Joy was talking earlier about how important that is and one of the ways to stay accountable is NaNoWriMo. Um, they also have a NaNoWriMo Prep 101. So if you were sort of thinking about doing it, but you really were intimidated about publishing a book in a month um, and you don't necessarily want to wait till next year, you can do it in a different month. If you want to participate nationally, obviously you want to do it next November, uh, but it'll give you some really great tips on how to actually get ready and get prepped for that for next year. Um, the Write Life, um, 100 Best Websites from Writers from 2020, um, that has a um, whole section on should you self-publish. So at the end of this, if you're still on the fence, go to The Write Life and look up their article about should you self-publish. Um, the Internet Writing Workshop is just another free resource that you can access to give you some um, tips and tricks to get your work ready to publish. 
the writer's cafe is interesting it is a um, place that you can sign up for free you can post your poetry short stories novels scripts if you're a screenplay if you're writing a screenplay um, you can get reviews and advice from thousands of other writers and it's another one of those places that offers um, hundreds of free writing contests uh, you can either join a writing group on the writer's cafe or you can actually start your own um, you can subscribe to their free online writing courses. You can search for publishers, literary agents, literary magazines, and hopefully start doing some networking, um, you know, there as well, because we've talked about a lot about how important that is. Um, Scribliophile has a free and premium options, and it's mostly designed for people who write poetry and prose, but they have some really good options for those. Um, the last one on the left-hand side is the Writer's Digest 101 Best Websites for Writers. Now, that resource is a little bit old. It's from 2015, but it still has really great resources, and it's organized by category. So if you're looking for, you know, websites on creativity or writing advice or agents, publishing and marketing resources, jobs and markets, um, online writing communities, uh, genre knit or niches or just for fun all that information is going to be right there on their website i when we were putting together this presentation i clicked through most of those links and most of those links were still live good links um, the net first one on the right hand side the ala list of writing resources for children and teens um, ala is the american library association and that was actually a student project that is composed um, that somebody composed as part of their master degree requirements but it has a lot of really great resources for if you're looking to publish a children's or a young adult book so i would definitely recommend checking that out if that's your genre um, Purdue Writing Lab covers a wide variety of top topics, general writing, professional writing, ESL writing, parts of speech, speech, sentence construction, punctuation, spelling, and writing in the job search. So, you know, definitely um, worth checking that one out as well. Chomp Chomp has interactive exercises to challenge your command of grammar. So if one of the things holding you back from publishing is whether or not you're sure the grammar police will come after you to check out chomp chomp or you can set up a free account with grammarly to check your spelling and grammar in real time and it has a chrome extension that you can add um, right to your um, search engine pro writing aid also offers a free account that allows you to cut and paste up to 500 words and check for grammar and spelling style filler words repeat words and more um, the online editor only um, is the free version. So they, they do have a subscription service that you have to pay for, but they do also have some good free options if you look into that one. And lastly, Evernote, um, they have a free account that allows you to collect articles and information from the web on up to two devices and you can access from there every, from, from every, ugh, from anywhere. Um, you know, again, these are not meant to be a full 100%, you know, where to go for resources. I would also mention again, Ingram Sparks, when we talked about where to get published earlier, you know, on their website, they have some really great resources for when you're actually getting into the writing and the editing process. All right. So other resources. Oh, this is All not right. Yeah, sorry. So, um, yeah, these are other publishing resources. These are places you can go for more information or things that can help you with the publishing process. Um, Michigan State University Guide. Um, it's a guide with information for self-publishers. It's going to talk about the logistics of book publishing, basic book design, such as copyrights, ISBNs, book parts, page design, and more. So all the different part moving parts of publishing, um, they're going to cover on their website. It's really, really useful for all that basic information. Um, like, you know, what is an ISBN and where do you get it and how does that work? Um, self-publishing schools guide to publishing. This site sells courses, but their basic guide on the steps to self-publishing is free. The, the guide is going to start with asking why you want to publish a book. Um, what are you writing? How are you? How do you format it? What's Kindle Direct Publishing? What are launch teams? How do you price books and so forth? There's just a richness of information there uh, for anybody who's trying to self-publish. Uh, Jane Friedman, again, I know that this. I feel like I'm. I promise I she, I'm getting nothing back from her. Um, <laughs> she's so fabulous. I've heard her speak in person, and she is just fantastic to listen to. Um, I do highly recommend. Um, she has, her website is really, really useful. Um, she has how to, how to, a whole page of resources, how to publish an ebook. 
Um, she also has an article that somebody else wrote, a friend of hers, 13 Most Common Self-Publishing Mistakes to Avoid. That is very, very important. It's really worth looking through. You want to make sure that you don't make those mistakes. Um, and also, there, she has kind of a, an information sheet that lays out all of the paths to publishing, all the way from publishing with the big five or big four as it's becoming um, to a total do it yourself. Um, and she talks about all of the, the things involved with each one of those. That would be a really good place to go if you're kind of on the fence and you don't know which way you want to go to read through that that um, entire page, that information sheet is going to give you an idea of the pluses and minuses for each of the ways to go. Um, 11 books that prove there's nothing wrong with self-publishing. Those are success stories. Those are to inspire you. Those are books that were self-published. Um, and if you go through there, you're going to read about other people's stories and what, how they managed to do it. And finally, Canva. Canva is free. Um, it is for creating, um, it's a design tool that you can use to create anything from front book covers to promotional materials. Um, I actually created my own business cards on Canva. Um, so I wanted to make, um, you know, author business cards, personal author business cards. So I actually created them on Canva and then just printed them out on my printer because you can buy um, uh, like business card stock that that breaks off so cleanly that you would think that they've been printed and they're gorgeous and people have no idea that I made those myself. And honestly, if you've ever admired any of the lovely signs that we put up in the branches, we always <laughs> use Canva for our uh, in-house marketing as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, so reviews. Um, I am a huge reader of reviews. I don't often have time to read all the books that actually appeal to me, but I love reading a good review. And reviews are a really good way to get your book out there, to get your book seen by librarians, to get them seen by avid readers. And these are all places that will help you get reviews. So the AOA Guide to Marketing, if you scroll down to the review section to find a list of professional review journals, magazines, and newspapers. Um, it There is a membership fee required, but there's no fee to access the information on their website. So if you actually want to join, there is a fee, but if you just want to get the information, there is no fee. So it's a little bit of a distinction there. So for Book Life, it is part of Publishers Weekly and Book Life offers reviews. So if you go to their review submission section, um, you can actually see if you can get your book um, you can submit your book and your book will be judged by professional standards, the same standards that Publisher Weekly applies to any books that get put into their um, professional review magazine that comes out each week. Forward Reviews um, offers two options. To qualify for a forward review, you must meet criteria, so, uh, select, ooh, selection criteria. Um, those who don't qualify can submit their work to Clarion uh, Forward's fee for review service. So you can try submitting your book for free for the first time. And if it doesn't work, if they reject it, um, you can go to their pay for website to help you get your book reviewed um, to do that professional criticism. Uh, constructive criticism. The Independent Book Publisher Association is an organization serving the independent publishing community through advocacy, education, and tools for success. There is a membership fee required to participate, but they do also offer those really good reviews. Uh, Kirkus Indie Reviews. Kirkus is one of my favorite places to actually look for reviews. Um, they do this thing where at the end they give you literally the last line about in the book, whether or not it's good, bad, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff. Um, it's one of the most established book review journals. Uh, their Kirkus reviews are typically fewer than 300 words and include, include uh, summary content to give context along with concise, unbiased opinion that can be positive, negative, or neutral. Um, you know, they don't really hold back at Kirkus. They tell you how, how it is with the books. Uh, Midwest Review, it gives priority consideration to small publishers, self-published authors, academic press, and specialty um, publishers whenever possible. A reviewing um, print books, CDs, DVDs is always free of charge with them. So options. So marketing, part of the um... Part of selling your book is marketing and this does not matter whether you're traditionally published or self-published you're going to have to market on your own a lot of um a lot of the big 
publishers aren't doing as much marketing as they used to. Um, they're kind of expecting the authors to take a lot of that on themselves. So no matter which kind of publishing you end up doing, marketing is going to be part of it. Number one is you want to consider having an author website. Um, this is really, really important to have an author website, whether you build it yourself, whether you um, you have somebody else do it. Um, you can do it for free at, with WordPress. That's what I've done. Um, everything is free. There is a little bit of a ramp up, but uh, we actually, the lynda.com I was telling you about, they actually have a WordPress um, essential training. Um, go to YouTube. A lot of times um, they'll have on YouTube, there'll be people who are talking about, you know, how they use WordPress and WordPress itself um, is is completely free. Um, you won't own your own domain name. You will have to pay for that. But I think I only pay like 20 bucks a year for my domain name. Um, and it's totally worth it because I've got my name. Um, and that means that nobody else can take it. Um, so that has been worth it to me. And that is the only thing I pay. I do everything else myself. Um, secondly, um, Jane Friedman again, uh, she actually has a whole uh, series of articles on how to build an author website. That was hugely helpful to me when I first started because she helps you to know the things that are important to have on your website, the things that don't matter. Um, those are important things to know. Um, I have not always followed her, her advice, but as I get ready to write a book proposal, I'm going to start like transitioning my, my website to match more what she's saying. Um, social media. Uh, you may or may not want to do social media. Everybody is different about social media. Um, there are different social media uh, platforms. Um, you want to choose the platform or platforms that are going to best reach your readers. So if your readers are mostly the kind of people who are going to be on Facebook, then you may only want to have Facebook and not bother with any of the others. But say you have got, um, you know, you're creative and you want to show a lot of pictures, Instagram might be a better place for you. That might be where you're going to find people. Twitter is some place where a lot of agents, a lot of publishers, and a lot of other authors, including indie authors, hang out. There's a lot of networking that happens on Twitter, um, but it's fast and furious. So you, you know, that's some Something that you need to decide what you want to do. There's also um, YouTube is another option. So there's there's lots of um, lots of different options for social media. Um, if you have to decide, if you have, don't have a lot of time and you have to decide, oh, do I want social media or do I want to spend time on my website? Always choose your website. Um, your website really is the more important. One, the social media is good for spreading word, but your website is where your main co content should be, um, where you should have a regular newsletter that are going out to people. Because if you have a person that subscribes to your newsletter, that is a thousand times better than a like on social media. Um, and that is something actually that uh, you're going to spread the word better and your content's going to be more solid on a website than on social media since social media is so fleeting and people go on and off. But a website, I know blogs I have followed for years, um, you know, as, as long as they're producing content, I'm probably gonna follow them. That is true for a lot of people. So you definitely want to uh, focus on the website if you have to choose. Um, and lastly, Ingram Sparks, I think that um, Aaron mentioned earlier, they have a lot of in information on platform, on audience, media kits, publicity. Um, they even have a free mini course on how to build an author platform. I highly recommend you go hang out over there and read some of their stuff. It's super helpful for getting your marketing started. And keep in mind that marketing is going to start before you really even start writing your book because you need to know who you're writing for, who's your audience. So the very first thing you should do before you do any of these other things is you need to start thinking, who is my audience? Um, who am I writing for? Because that is going to drive how you set up your website, what kind of social media you choose, and everything else that you do. So um, keep that in mind as you begin your journey. Okay, so some of the fun stuff is networking. So there are three different types of networking that you'll have to want to think about when you actually get start, started with or, um, promoting your book, local, regional, and national. So for... If you're thinking about joining a network, many of these, if not all of them, will actually charge a membership fee. However, some of their websites will still have great articles on writing and publishing if you don't want to join. So just keep that in mind. Um, for local, um, we have lots of really good resources right here in our backyard. Um, one of them is the uh, Porter 
local writers conference that happens annually. Unfortunately, it did not happen this year because of COVID, but we are bringing it back next spring. Um, it's a great place to meet other authors. You know, last year we had, I think, 65 or 70 people, um, local authors attend. So it's definitely a way to get your name out there with the other people in the region, especially, you know, if you're looking for people who are like-minded writers, looking for people who could possibly beta test, like Joy was talking, beta read for you earlier, it might be a good place to find those people. Um, the Fred Book Fest is the Frederick Fredericksburg Book Festival. It's another great place to meet indie authors. Uh, hosting a table has a cost, but the networking is free. So even if you can't afford a table, feel free to go and meet people, introduce yourself, you know, print out some of those free business cards on Canva that Joey was talking about earlier, bring them, hand them out to people. Um, the library goes to that every year that it's there and, you know, huge amounts of local authors are there promoting their works and um, getting to meet other people. The Riverside Writers Group is a local chapter of the Virginia's Writer Club, and you can attend their meetings without actually joining. And they also have a um, Young Writers for teens 12 to 17. So keep that in mind as well. So for regional and state, we have the Virginia's Writer Club, the James River Writers of the Richmond area, and the Poetry Society of Virginia. For national, many of these organizations have state and local chapters as well. You kind of want to think about what your book is and what your genre that you're writing is. So there are the Romance Writers of America, the Science Fiction Fantasy Writers Association of America, the Society for um, Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, the Society, the American Society of Journalists and Authors, the um, National Association of Writers, the International Women's um, Writers Guild, the Mystery Writers of America, Sisters in Crime, American Historical Writers. These are just a few. We could go on and on and on about national writing groups because there are basically, for any genre that you can think of, there's a writing group that will have that. And, you know, again, like I said, many of them will have membership fees. But compared to the networking and the exposure that you could get, you know, especially if you're getting ready to publish and you want somebody to read your book and maybe write a blurb on it or something, you know, making those connections is really important. Mm -hmm. And other resources, you know, Joy touched on this for a few minutes ago about Twitter, but um, I just wanted to expand upon it because I have found Twitter to be really engaging for authors. Um, you know, look for the authors that you love and respect and the genres that you want to write for. Most likely the author has a Twitter page where they will post things about their lives, writing, how their book is going, and etc. If you go to a conference, both virtual and in person, follow the event on Twitter. Um, authors will sometimes tweet you back. I was at a library event a couple of um, weeks ago, and I am a big science fiction fantasy nerd. And uh, Sean Ann McGuire tweeted something, and I tweeted her back, and her and I started a little conversation on Twitter. And she's a New York Times bestselling author, and I just was very much geeking out about that. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely if you go to conferences, follow the conference on Twitter. Uh, follow agents, publishing houses, and other local authors. You might notice a call for local a call for author submissions or speaker events. Um, they'll sometimes give you great advice. You know, Angie Thomas, uh, Thomas about two weeks ago posted this on her Twitter page, and it's literally a question for aspiring authors out there. Do you know how to get traditionally published? Because she gets a lot of direct messages from people, people who don't know those things. And then she actually had a thread of about probably 15 slides just explaining the traditional publishing process that I found incredibly helpful to read. So if anybody else is interested in traditional publishing or just curious about the process, um, definitely want to follow some of these authors. So, you know, some of the authors that we mentioned, we already said Angie Thomas. Excuse me. Joanna Penn. Um, she's at uh, Creative Penn on Twitter. She is a thriller author and she writes and podcasts about being an author and an entrepreneur. The Alliance of Independent Authors, which is at Indie Author A L L I, they run a blog on self publishing advice and provides a great resource for indie authors. Um, Joel Friedlander, which is at JF Bookman, um, he's also known as the book designer. He offers fabulous contents and webinars about all things self publishing. And last but not least, and I'm sorry if I spelled it, say this wrong, Penny um, Sansevier, which is at BookGal. When it comes to marketing, especially um, getting books, your book seen on Amazon, she really knows her stuff. Uh, these are just a few of the Twitter accounts that you might be interested in following. Like I said, if I would definitely go on and check for your favorite author or genre. You can follow topics on Twitter too. So you could follow romance books or just books or just young adults and you'll still get all that great content and start to get to know who to connect with people. 
All right. So <clears throat> another resource is podcast. Um, I'm uh, Aaron was just saying she's a science fiction fantasy nerd. I am a podcast nerd. I read. I listen to podcasts of all different kinds, and writing podcasts, of course, are one of my favorite. Um, I am. I included on the handout just a very small sampling of writing podcasts. There are hundreds, literally hundreds out there. Um, these are a few here. There are more on the handout. Um, they, some of them are um, really short, you know, 10, 15 minutes. You know, you can do it um, while you're, you're you know, walking your dog. Um, others can go on for an hour or more. Um, they're of all different kinds. So like Ann Croker, writing coach, she talks about writing craft, but then the beautiful writers um, podcast, that's interviews with some of the best writers. So you get a feel for, you know, what's their, what's their process. Um, the creative pen podcast that we were talking about on Twitter, uh, she's on Twitter, but she talks about Everything, you know, craft, publishing, everything, marketing, the whole nine yards. Um, first draft is writers of all genres talk about how how they write, um, how that works. Um, so you could just choose one in the genre that you're writing and listen to those. Um, Grammar Girl, those are great. They're 15 minute episodes on grammar tips. So if you um, go through and you say, hey, I'm having trouble with, you know, um, telling homophones apart, you know, which and which, you know, how, how do you tell those apart? Um, Grandma Girl may have an episode for you. It's only 15 minutes and then you will have that tool in your toolbox for your writing, which is super helpful. Um, helping writers become authors um, is on craft, on polishing, on building an audience, and also life as a creative. What's it like to, what does it mean to be a creative, to be a writer? What does that mean? What does it look like? What, what does your life look like? Um, just encouragement and inspiration for writers. Um, long form is focusing more on nonfiction writing and journalistic writing. Um, that one is really great if you're doing nonfiction writing. Um, Self-publishing school is how-tos, it's motivation, interviews with self-published authors so you can hear how other authors have managed to self-publish. Um, writing excuses, those are that's another short one. It's about 15 minutes long, usually 20 at the most. Um, and that's about how to improve your writing, different ways that you can improve your writing. So that's just the smallest sampling. Um, there are lots and lots out there. Um, try them out. You may like it, you may not. Sometimes, I mean, there are some podcasts I'll listen to, I'll be like, you know what, I don't like I don't like their content or I don't like their voice or I don't like how long it is um, and I won't listen anymore, but others, they're just gold and I will listen to every single one and go and listen to all their back, ones, uh, back episodes as well. Okay, so that concludes the presentation itself.